Hello, my name is Victor Röhman and welcome to this tutorial on Endo 2. In this video, I'll go over a few of the key features of Endo and explain my workflow creating a basic environment tile. I will be creating normals from a few simple blockout shapes and I will then move on to create normal details directly using more advanced features such as sculpting. To start off, I'm simply blocking out the main shapes using white solids to get a good feel for the general design. I'm using the marquee tool to make selections and I just fill in with a white color to get a feeling of the overall look and the spacing. Blocking out shapes before generating the normals is always a good idea to save time and headaches. And right now I'm working on the main walking area, blocking out the floor framing and the actual floor space. As you can see now, I'm adding a 2 pixel cut along certain parts. This is because I want the area to look plated. I'm also deciding now which parts of the tile will be segmented and which parts should run continuously along the tiles, such as the thin trims around the middle part of the tile. This is because I want to try and balance the repeating and continuous parts to avoid apparent tiling. And as you can see here, I'm still deciding on the shapes. I'm also using the rounded rectangle shape tool for the parts I want to appear to be stamped into the base floor. This will be the main focal point of the tile. So I'm spending some time here just to get the shapes right. I'll be putting a bunch of wires, tubes and cables here, so I'm trying to visualize where they're gonna go by playing around with the shapes. As you can see, I'm just doing small adjustments and this is the reason why I like to work with solid colors in the blockout phase. It would definitely be possible to do this in a normal creation, but it's just a lot easier this way. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with how it looks now, so I'm gonna start up Endo 2. The first part I will convert to normals is the left panel. I'm just using the default settings with some slight smoothness at around 3 to 4 pixels. The next part is the left trim. I'm using the same bevel type, but for this I'm increasing the size quite a bit. I'm also using a small amount of smoothness, just to make the normals pop more. Now I'm going to convert the middle part. And here I'm changing the slant to down instead of up, to make it go inwards. I'm also making it quite smooth to make it look like it's been stamped into the base metal sheet. Next part is the right trim. I'm using pretty much the same settings as I did on the left trim. And now I'm working on the floor frame. I'm using a very small size for this, and barely any smoothness at all. Because I want it to look like a very thin metal frame to add some variations to the texture. And as you can see, because I added those two pixel cuts to the floor area, I'm getting these cool bevels here. And make sure you add some smoothness here as well. Now I'm done with converting the main shapes. And I'm noticing the middle part looks really abstract and weird. So I decided to add a cover plate to it. Partly to make it look more functional, and partly because I want more space you can walk on. I'm starting out with a really simple rectangular shape to see if my idea works. I then start refining the shape a bit by going into sculpt mode and simply removing parts of it using the marquee tool. I'm noticing the underlying shapes are a bit offset, so I'm using the sculpt tool to move them down a bit. Once I'm done, I go out of sculpt mode to preview it. Now I'm gonna be demonstrating a bit what you can do with the sculpt tool. First of all I'm creating a thin lip to the cover plate by simply selecting the shape and contracting the selection by a few pixels. I used the default bevel settings after playing around a bit with the different settings. And then add some smoothness to it. Then I go into sculpt mode and I delete the top and bottom parts of the lip by using a soft eraser. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want the lip to look like it's part of the same piece as the cover plate. I'm now using the rounded rectangle tool to create a sort of a downward slant to the cover plate, using the same technique I used for the lip. So 
So, in order to duplicate this to the bottom part, I'll go into sculpt mode again, select the shape, and alt drag it to where I want it, instead of duplicating the layer. This is a great way to keep your PSD files clean and optimize the performance of it. Alright, so I'm just going to fast forward a bit while I add some more details using the same technique I just explained. And one of the great things about Endo 2 is the non-destructive workflow. I can always go back and make changes to things I've already made as you see here. Right, here I'm creating a very simple height map using grey and white to create this hinge clamp. This allows me to create height variations in a single shape. Here I want to create the hinge, and the way I'm gonna go about doing this is to create a selection quite a bit taller than what the hinge will be in the end. I boost the size up a bit, and then tweak the softness until I get the result I want. And once I'm happy with how it looks, I will mask away the excess parts at the top and bottom. And as you can see, because I simply masked away the top and bottom, it ends very abruptly, providing no height information. So to fix this, I simply create a rectangle shape behind it, and use the bevel outer settings with a very small size. Here I'm using the hard light blending mode in order to make the rivets follow the curvature of the underlying hinge. So now I'm going to create some shapes using the groove bevel mode. And just like I did on the rivets on the hinge, I'm using a hard light to ensure that it follows the underlying shapes. To create a circular shape, simply use a downward slant and then apply a groove bevel. Playing around with these settings can really create some cool results, so make sure you, you try them all out. To duplicate the shapes, simply go into sculpt mode. Select what you want to copy, and alt-drag it to where you want it. Now I'm going to create some wires and cables. And to do this, I'm using the pen tool to draw out smooth and curved shapes. And a great thing about this is that it's completely non-destructive, so you can go back and edit the curve and the normal map will update accordingly. And to get the rounded shape, I apply quite a bit of softness. When working with shapes like this, I prefer to enable anti-aliasing to avoid jaggy edges. Next I'm going to add some more pipes of some sort, to add some visual interest here. I'm using the same technique as I used when creating the hinge before. Just play around with the size and softness until you find a result you like. 
and also make sure you preview a lot. I'm just going to add some cable clamps here before moving on to the next part. And there we go. For this hatch, I'm just creating a very simple shape using the rectangle marquee tool and the polygonal selection mode. I used the groove bevel settings to make it look like it's going into the underlying object. And now I'm just making some detail for the floor frame using the rounded rectangle tool. Next I want to add another layer to the right trim. When generating things you want to tile continuously, make sure you check no edge bevel. This removes all bevels for things touching the document borders. Now it's time for the final detail pass, so I want to add some screws and bolts. The first thing I want to do is make the inset for the bolts, so I'm just creating a downward slanting normal generated from a circular shape. And then apply quite a bit of smoothness to it. And once I'm done with that, it's time to make the actual screw. I played around with this to get the result I wanted, just using the predefined bevel settings. And next I just go into sculpt mode and duplicate the screws and place them where I want them. As I mentioned previously, using the sculpt mode to duplicate objects is highly recommended. Not only does it keep your PSD cleaner and more optimized, it also allows you to make tweaks to all the duplicated objects instantly. Now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the smaller parts where I want screws. And after I'm playing around, I decided to make a smaller version instead. To generate the screws, I just used the groove bevel mode, and this works really well because it's such a small shape. Right, so we're almost there. After looking at the texture, I decided I want some more details on the hinge. So first off, I'm creating a small rectangular shape that I overlay using the hard light blending mode. After that, I want to attach the hinge to the part to the left. So I just create a simple shape using a combination of hard light and sculpting it to get a more organic look to it. For this detail, I'm just using the groove and standard bevels, in combination with the eraser tool to create the dents in it. Once I'm done with that, I'm just creating some very simple details using hard light blending mode to overlay them properly.
Alright, that's it. I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching. Make sure to check out the next part of the tutorial series in which we'll go over Endo2's bacon options for creating AO, cavity, diffuse and specular bases. Until next time.